Hello, my name's Valentina and this is my house. Come on in. Hi. This is my kitchen and this is my mum. Hi mum. Today I'll be making a vegetarian moussaka because it's my favourite food. Valentina is going to make vegetarian moussaka in her own special way. Valentina's mum's family are Greek and they come from Greece. Greece is a small country in Europe made up of a mainland and lots of islands. It's one of the oldest countries in Europe and the capital city Athens has been the centre of Greece for thousands of years. Greek food is full of fresh fruit and vegetables. Family mealtime is especially important to Greek people who eat many healthy foods such as olives, lamb, fish, squid, chickpeas and lots of vegetables. Valentina has washed her hands, put on her apron and she's ready to cook. I'll be making a vegetarian masaka for my friends. It's a traditional Greek dish. She's invited Thomas, Angela and Tian to taste one of the ingredients before they come round for a special Greek meal later. What's that? Feels kind of squishy. I don't know what it is. It's cooked aubergine. I don't like it. Uh-oh. Ha! Ah, I don't like it and it's spicy. They're not very keen on the taste of aubergine. Tastes pretty bitter. Can Valentina change their minds? Don't like its taste. Because aubergine is an important ingredient in her vegetarian moussaka. As well as aubergine, you'll need cinnamon, grated cheddar cheese, thick Greek yoghurt, olive oil, eggs, ground nutmeg, tomato puree, dried oregano, black pepper, fresh garlic, fresh parsley, tinned tomatoes, ground cumin, potatoes, cooked green lentils, spring onions and courgettes. First, what we're going to do is we're going to chop up the courgettes. You've got to chop off the bottom and the top first. And carefully cut the rest into slices. Now put them on baking paper with a little olive oil, just like Valentina. Ask a grown-up to peel and boil potatoes for you and carefully cut them into slices. Put them on the tray as well and brush them all with olive oil. Now you're going to add some pepper. Scotland is part of the UK, along with England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Scotland's hills are good for grazing animals and the weather is perfect for growing lots of different types of food. The winters there are cold, so many years ago people would eat lots of foods like porridge, stews and soups to keep them warm. Haggis is a famous Scottish food. It's an unusual type of savoury pudding. On special occasions in Scotland, bagpipes are played as the cooked haggis is taken to the table where it's eaten with neeps and tatties. Connor has washed his hands, put on his apron and he's ready to cook. I am going to be making vegetarian haggis with neeps and tatties for my friends. And he's invited Cooper, Amy and Alonzo to taste a special ingredient before they come round for a Scottish meal later. What's that? Um, a piece of grass, maybe? It's not grass. It tastes quite plain. I won't eat any more of it. Nah, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's fresh coriander. I would like to try it if I had it in a meal. That's good, but not everyone seems to like it. Let's see if Connor can change their minds, because coriander is one of the ingredients in his vegetarian haggis. As well as coriander, you'll need butter, mushrooms, milk, chopped hazelnuts, potatoes, ground nutmeg, stock powder, a carrot, tinned kidney beans, water, porridge oats, black pepper, spring onions, a neep, which is also known as a swede, and some salt. What's first, Connor? What I am going to be 
doing is I am going to be mixing the stock with the water and then you would mix it. Now time to drain your kidney beans and tip them onto a plate. What's next? And we are going to be mashing the beans. It is really fun mashing the beans and I mean really fun. So now that's properly mashed, what we need to do is pour the kidney beans into the big bowl. Now tear up the mushrooms. It's very healthy to put in every single part of the mushroom. And carefully grate a carrot. So some people think that haggis is a wee animal that runs about the highlands, but you can tell it's not. <laughs> You're quite right there, Connor. Make sure you collect all your gratings with a fork or a spoon. After you grate your carrot, the carrot goes in the bowl. Now add the chopped hazelnuts, porridge oats, ground nutmeg and some black pepper. Italy is a country in Europe that looks like the shape of a boot. In Italy, people like to cook with fresh ingredients that come from close to where they live. Many Italian families spend a lot of time cooking big meals that they can all enjoy together. There are many types of Italian food, including pasta and pizza. Pizza is made by putting toppings such as cheese, meat and vegetables all over a piece of dough covered in sauce. Now Eddie has washed his hands, put his apron on, and he's ready to cook. I'm making an olive pizza for my friends. And he's invited round Ian, Daniel and Amelia to taste one of the main ingredients before they come round for an Italian meal later. What's that? Grape or a blueberry? It's not a grape. So what do you think it is? It looks like an olive. It is an olive. <laughs> It's quite bad. Oh dear. It does not taste nice. Do you think everyone would like Eddie's pizza? It has got olives in it. It's quite disgusting. So, as well as olives, you'll also need sugar, salt, water, dried yeast, strong white bread flour, tinned plum tomatoes, olive oil, black pepper, and mozzarella cheese. Come on, Eddie, tell us what's first. We get the ball on here. First, I'm going to measure my flour. That's really important, Eddie. My mum taught me how to cook this pizza. To make the dough, Eddie's adding dried yeast and a pinch of salt. You'll need to keep the salt away from the yeast. Now we get the sugar. The yeast likes the sugar. So the yeast will eat that. The yeast will make the dough rise so it becomes much bigger. What's next? You can get two spoons of oil and put it in the water. Great. Now pour that in. And then we need to mix it around with this. That looks really sticky. Go on, mix it all together. We're making a dough for the pizza. I think I need to get my hands in. Yes, you do, Eddie. Squeeze it together. Yeah, just like that. Get a, a flour, sprinkle it around there. Get that. Put it on here. And that flour will stop it sticking to the board. As well as spinach, you'll need grated cheese, a carrot, Salt, black pepper, roasted red pepper, self-raising flour, vegetable oil and water. I've got a bowl of flour and I'm going to get a pinch of salt and put it in. That's it, make a hole in the middle. Then add vegetable oil. What's next? I'm going to put some water in. And start mixing. I'm trying to make dough. 
if it gets a little bit sticky, add some more flour. Usually we use our hands in Trinidad, that's why I'm using mine. Add some more water. Make the dough into a ball. My grandma taught my mum how to make this, and then my mum taught me how to make it. I'm just going to wash my hands. Cover the bowl with a clean tea towel and put it to one side. In another bowl, add grated carrot, chopped roasted red pepper and the grated cheese. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? That's right, spinach. Spinach is a leafy flowering plant and the leaves are the part of the plant that we eat. There are different types of spinach. Some have dark green curly leaves. Some have wide, smooth leaves, and others have slightly crinkly leaves. Spinach is full of things that are good for you. Some people think it can give you strong bones and muscles. And many years ago, artists used the green colour in spinach leaves to help them make green ink and paint. Carefully chop the spinach and add it to the bowl. What's next? I'm going to put some pepper in. Then mix it, mix it, mix it. What's next, Amelia? I'm going to do my dough. Sprinkle some flour to stop the dough sticking. Split the dough in half. Add some more flour. Then roll one half out with a rolling pin. I first learned to roll a roti in Trinidad. Trinidad is a very hot place and it's always sunny. Now, I'm going to cut the roti halfway up. Careful with those scissors. And paint it with vegetable oil. Then, take half of your yummy filling and sprinkle it over the rolled dough. We're going to start rolling. I'm rolling it up into a cone. And then, I'm pinching this edge and tucking it inside because sweet potato is one of the main ingredients in his recipe. You'd also need cherry tomatoes, vegetable oil, spring onions, plain flour, garlic puree, baking powder, fresh coriander, and salt. Mateo starting with the pebre, a side dish made with chopped up fresh ingredients. Put the coriander leaves into the jug. Along with the juicy tomatoes. My favourite bit about chilli is the hotness. Mmm, it's lovely and hot there. What's next? Now I'm going to chop it all up with the scissors. Careful of your fingers, Matteo. Then add chopped spring onions and garlic puree. Mix it, mix it, mix it. And that's the pebre ready for later. Next, take your bowl of flour and add some baking powder. Add a pinch of salt. And give it a little stir. Mmm, you'll need this to make the dough later. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, sweet potato. A sweet potato plant has roots that you can eat called tubers. The inside of a tuber can be orange, white, purple, red, pink, yellow or even violet. Sweet potato can be boiled and mashed, roasted, fried, or even juiced. And the juice from the flesh of the sweet potato can be used to dye cloth different colours. Ask a grown-up to cook and cool the sweet potatoes for you. Now we are going to twist the sweet potato and take the inside out. In Chile, sweet potato is called camote. Camote. Never mind if your hands get messy, it's part of the fun. It does look fun. Then add five spoons of oil. Uno, which means one. Dos, which means two. Tres, which means three. Cuatro, which means four. And cinco, which means five. 
Excellent Spanish counting, Mateo. Spanish is the language spoken by most people in Chile. Now we are going to mix it up. Mix it, mix it, mix it. We are going to put the potato into the bowl. Mix the potato into the flour to make your dough. I have lots of family in Chile. We have lots of traditions and I'm going to show you one. Can't wait to see that later, Mateo. Now we are going to knead the dough. That means to push and pull it. Go on, Mateo. As well as mushrooms, you'll need cooked spinach, grated cheese, vegetable oil, plain flour, water and salt. First I'm going to get the flour and then I put a little hole and add the water and squish them together with my hands. What are you making there, Chuki? I am making the dough. That's more water and flour going in. It feels very squishy. It's like some slime. My mum taught me how to make this recipe. My favourite food is Momo, so that's why I'm making it today. Flour the worktop, push and pull the dough some more, and then put the dough back into the bowl. Cover the bowl with a clean tea towel and put it to one side for later. Then wash those sticky fingers. Now I'm going to make the filling. Ask a grown-up to cook and cool some spinach for you. I'm going to use two forks to pull the spinach into small pieces. Add the spinach to grated cheese. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's mushrooms. Mushrooms are a type of fungus that grow very fast. There are many different types of mushrooms that grow in all sorts of places. It's important not to pick and eat them because not all mushrooms are safe to eat and some can even be poisonous. Mushrooms can grow very large and one type of mushroom has been found to be bigger than a blue whale. There are even mushrooms that glow in the dark and people have been known to use these to help them see their way around. I'm gonna get the um, mushrooms and I'm going to squish them together to small pieces. Have you been to Tibet before, Juki? I have been to Tibet before. There were like some dusty roads and there was lots of people and there were lots of traditional houses. Now I get the bowl with cheese and spinach and then I add the mushrooms in it. Add some vegetable oil and a pinch of salt. And then I mix them together. Chuki is using her hands, but you can use a spoon if you want to. And then I'm going to oil the steamer. That will stop the momos from sticking. Now I'm going to flour the surface and then I'm going to put the dough on. Split the dough in half and roll one half into a sausage shape because cooked lentils are one of the main ingredients in Yaya's recipe. You'll also need tomato passata, spring onions, black pepper, fresh parsley, ground cloves, garlic, smooth peanut butter, vegetable oil, vegetable stock powder, warm water and dry thyme. First, add a dessert spoon of peanut butter to warm water. Make sure nobody eating this is allergic to nuts. Add vegetable stock and give it a stir. What's next? Add some passata to the jug. And give it another stir. Add dry thyme, ground cloves, and a few twists of black pepper. Then you've guessed it. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Now peel and crush your garlic. Just peel off the papery skin. Ask a grown-up to help you if you find this tricky. 
Guinea-Bissau is in Africa. It's very hot and it's a very nice place because there's lots of animals. I would like to go there one day. Now use a garlic crusher to carefully crush the garlic onto your worktop. Use a spoon to help you scrape any garlic off. Add it to the jug and mix it, mix it, mix it again. It's time to grease my casserole dish. Just brush oil over the dish. In Guinea-Bissau they speak Portuguese and another language called Creole. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. Mmm, and you know what that is, don't you? It's lentils. Lentils grow on a plant that has green leaves and small flowers. The flowers turn into pods, and inside these pods are the lentils, which can be used in cooking. Lentils grow in lots of different colours, including yellow, orange, brown, black and green. Lentils can be used in lots of different recipes, such as soups, salads and stews, just like yayas. Now it's time to wash my lentils. Tip the cooked lentils into a sieve and give them a good rinse under cold water. What are you up to now? I need to pour my lentils into the casserole dish. Carefully, Trim the ends of your spring onions and cut them into small pieces. Add them to the lentils. I think it tastes okay. Only okay? Let's see what everyone thinks later, because dates are one of the main ingredients in Sunny Mac's recipe. As well as dates, you'll need bananas, unsalted butter, digestive biscuits, warm water, whipping cream and cocoa powder. What's first? I will be breaking these biscuits up. Break them into small pieces. Then carefully bash them with the end of a rolling pin until they look like crumbs. Kids, if you do this at home, you have to wash your hands and have an apron. This is quite messy. It looks fun though. Ask a grown-up to melt the butter for you, and when it's slightly cooled, carefully tip it into the bowl. Then give it a good mix. Delicious! Tip the buttery biscuit crumbs onto baking paper in a cake tin. Spread them out and flatten with the back of a spoon, just like this. What's next? Now we're going to put the cake tin in the fridge. You'll need that a bit later. It's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's dates. Dates are a fruit that grow on date palm trees in hot countries. They are a sweet, oval-shaped fruit and can grow on their own or in clumps. Dates can be eaten fresh or dried and used in salads, desserts, sauces and even drinks. In ancient times, the people of Egypt used dates to make their bread taste nice and sweet. I'm going to weigh these chopped up dates to 100 grams. Sunny Mac is using dried chopped dates in his banoffee pie. Pour over some warm water and put the dish aside for later. Now I need to slush around my cream. Make sure the lid is on nice and tight and shake the jar of whipping cream like this. Shake it, shake it, shake it. This will make the cream lovely and thick. I really hope my friends Rex, Macy and Daisy will like my recipe. Let's hope so. I just need to have a little check. Oh, that's definitely done. Oh, it smells pretty good too. I'm sure it does. Now I need to mush all these dates up. Mash them down with the back of your fork to make a paste. What's next? Now I need my biscuit base from the fridge. The base has gone hard in the fridge, so you can tip it out of the cake case. Peel off the baking paper and put it on a plate. 
I do not like it. Oh dear, not everyone likes it. Do you think Marion can change their minds? Because feta cheese is one of the main ingredients in his recipe. You'll also need mushrooms, yellow pepper, chopped tomatoes, paprika, dried oregano, dried thyme, black pepper, and eggs. First, I'm gonna break up some mushrooms. That's it. Just break and tear the mushrooms into pieces. The best cook in my family is my grandma. My mum and dad and grandma come from Bulgaria. Have you been there, Marion? I've been on holiday to Bulgaria. There were lots of great beaches. Put the torn mushrooms into a bowl. That's it. Now it's time to break up my pepper. Push and pull apart a yellow pepper, like this, to take out the seeds. Then tear it into small pieces. I really hope my friends like this recipe. Let's hope so. Put the pepper into the bowl with the mushrooms. And now I'm going to start seasoning these tomatoes using paprika. Then add dried oregano, dried thyme and a few twists of black pepper. One, two, three, four, five. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Now it's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's feta cheese. Feta is a kind of cheese that is usually made from the milk of sheep or goats. It was invented a very long time ago by the people of ancient Greece. The milk is separated into solid curds and runny whey. To make the cheese, the curds are squashed together and drained to get rid of any leftover whey. This is cut up, sprinkled with salt, and is then ready to eat. Carefully cut the feta cheese into smaller pieces so you can crumble it up with your hands. It's lovely and crumbly. That's it. Add the crumbled feta to the bowl of vegetables and mix it, mix it, mix it. What's next, Marion? I'm going to put my tomatoes in my special Bulgarian pot. Marion is using pots that come... What's that? It looks like a slug. Oh, it's not a slug. It feels squishy and a little bit um, wet. I think it might be a pepper or something. Ooh, it's not a pepper either. It's quite vinegary. I think it's pickle. That's right, it's dill pickle. I really like the taste. Oh, good. I can't really describe it, but it just doesn't taste nice. Uh-oh, not everyone likes it. Can Kai change their minds? Because dill pickle is an important ingredient in his recipe. As well as dill pickle, you'll need cream, spring onions, carrots, stock powder, bread rolls, new potatoes, and warm water. So first we're going to cut the top and the tail for the spring onions. Then just carefully cut them up into little pieces. And now I'm going to pick them up and put them in the bowl. Then take cold new potatoes, which Mum cooked earlier, carefully cut them into smaller pieces and add them to the spring onions. Spoon stock powder into warm water and mix it, mix it, mix it. Add it to the dish and mix it again. What's next? I'm going to snap these carrots into little pieces so it's easier to grate it. Pop the chunks into a grater and here's Kai's sister, Maya, to help. Come 
Come on, you can do it. Yes, he can. I'm glad I've got Maya here to help me with the grating. Oh, well done, you two. OK, now it's time for my special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? It's dill pickle. Dill pickles are small cucumbers that have been soaked in a mixture. The mixture mostly contains vinegar, a herb called dill, mustard seeds and water. This makes them very tasty. Cucumbers are grown from seed and cucumber plants are called vines. These grow yellow flowers. Many of these flowers grow into the cucumbers that we eat. There are lots of different types of cucumbers. Some have smooth skins and some have bumpy skins. Eating cucumber is very good for you. It's thought that it can even help you keep awake when you're feeling tired. What's that? Looks like an apple. It looks like cucumber. Looks like a cucumber. Oh, it's not apple or cucumber. It's courgette. I don't really know what it is. It tastes a bit boring. I think I might like this in food. Everyone's not sure about the taste of courgette. Can Scarlett change their minds because courgettes are one of the main ingredients in Scarlett's ratatouille? You'll also need fresh thyme, roasted peppers, long shallots, camembert cheese, baby aubergines, chopped tinned tomatoes, black pepper, garlic and vegetable oil. First we're going to grease the dish. Brush the inside with the vegetable oil and tip in the chopped tomatoes. They're all slurping and red. Take roasted peppers from a jar and dab them dry on kitchen paper. So I'm going to dab them with a tissue. Then I'm going to chop them up into strips. Carefully does it, Scarlet. Then just pop them into the dish. Get the aubergines and cut the top and the bottom of the aubergines. Mmm. Now carefully cut them into smaller chunks. Add them to the tomatoes and roasted peppers and give it all a good mix. Cut the ends from your long shallots. Peel the shallots. My friends have not had ratatouille, so I hope they like it. Oh, let's hope so, Scarlet. Now pop your shallots into a plastic food bag and then peel some garlic. If you find this tricky, you can ask a grown-up to help you. Let's put our garlic in the bag. Now give it a good bash. And don't forget, you can always wash the bag and use it again afterwards. It's really hard to bash the sh shallots. Nice and bashed, we can pour it into the pot. And we're going to stir it. Now it's time for my very special ingredient. And you know what that is, don't you? That's right, it's courgette. Courgettes are vegetables that grow from a plant. Courgettes can be cooked in many different ways, such as boiled, grilled, or cut into strips and used just like pasta. Courgettes are grown all over the world and in some countries are known as zucchini. What's that? I think this is a banana. I think it's a banana. Banana. You're all right. It's unripened green banana. It doesn't taste like normal banana. It's not very sweet. It's unripe. You should only taste a small amount for this special taste test. I don't like it as much as ordinary bananas. Uh-oh. Everyone's not too sure about the taste of unripened banana. Let's see if Talib can change their minds, because it's one of the main ingredients in his banana curry. You'll also need garlic cloves, black pepper, cumin seeds, a green pepper, fresh coriander, long shallots, water, baby tomatoes, black mustard seeds, medium curry powder, ground turmeric, coconut cream, ginger paste and lemon. First I'm going to take the shallots 
I cut the hairy bits off. This look, looks like a squashed onion. Carefully does it, Talib. Then peel off the skin. My mum told me I to cook this meal and they really love it. What's next? Peel the garlic. If you find this tricky, ask a grown-up to help you. Now pop them into a plastic food bag. And bash them with a rolling pin into small pieces. This is for bashing the bag. Remember, you can wash the bag out afterwards to use it again. Then tip everything into the casserole dish and grind in some black pepper. Now I'm going to get the green peppers and pull the stalk off. Just push and pull apart the pepper and take out the seeds. When they open in the peppers, it sounds a little crunchy. Tear it up into small pieces. Ooh, that's it. I'm going to put all the green peppers into the bowl. I'm going to get the tomatoes and cut them with the scissors. Careful there, Talib. I really love tomatoes. And add them to the dish with black mustard seeds. I'm going to have one pinch of cumin seed. And some medium curry powder, ground turmeric and ginger paste. 